Now we come to somebody who was also very important to the era. His name was Oscar Fingal O'Flaherty Wills Wilde. <laughs> he was Irish, of course, a brilliant young student, did magnificently in his studies both in uh, Dublin and then in uh, Oxford. He was publishing as a young man in his 20s. He was, he was quite the rage. He gathered a society of young men around him. They all were very eccentric in their dress, and they had long hair and wore old-fashioned clothes and smoked hashish. Hmm. Well, anyway, they, they were considered eccentric. Uh, hmm. And, uh, and he, he toured America, you know, lecturing and all of this when he was in his late 20s. And then he published his famous novel, Picture of Dorian Gray, when he was in the late 30s. That was made quite a scandal, and everybody read that. That was the time when he met Lord Alfred Douglas. Douglas was barely 20. Wilde was now almost 40. Wilde was married, Constance, and they had two sons. Wilde had had homosexual relationships, a handful, with young men his own station and, and age. Douglas was much younger and, and totally captivated Wilde. Douglas was the son of the Marcus of Queensbury, the younger son. Marcus of Queensbury was a, a hugely wealthy man who governed sports regulation, horse racing and boxing and such. Everybody loathed him. He was a loathsome man. But he was so rich and so powerful that everybody put up with him. He didn't like his younger son, uh, Alfred Douglas, and they did not get on at all. And Queensbury was furious when he heard about the relationship between Wilde and his son. Wilde was putting one play, he didn't put them on, but they were put on for him. His plays, Lady Windermere's fan, came out in 92 and made a huge success. Wilde was invited everywhere, every country house for the weekend, all the houses in London. He was the lionized by all society. Everybody wanted Wilde. He was witty and charming and fun and and everything and everywhere Wilde went, now Douglas went too. You just included him in the, in the house party. Well, in 95, he had just produced The Importance of Being Earnest, his most famous play. It was the height of his fame. And uh, Queensbury was determined to break this relationship. So we went out to Wilde's club. Every gentleman belonged to a club, men's club. Queensbury handed over his card, Marcus Queensbury, Esquire, so on and so on, with something written on the back to the porter. Well, usually you hand it over to the manager if you're leaving a card. And the porter took it and looked at it. Oh, my God, on the back he'd written. He rushed to the manager, handed it to the manager. The manager, oh, my God, asked Mr. Wilde to come in immediately. Well, when Wilde came in, he was asked to come in the manager and please sit down, Mr. Wilde, and hand him the card. Wilde looked at it and said, oh, my God to Oscar Wilde posing as a sodomite. Well, the sodomy laws were very harsh in England at this time. Wilde left the club, never went back. He was induced by Alfred Douglas to sue the Marcus of Queensbury. The suit, of course, meant that Queensbury could gather evidence. Uh, Alfred Douglas had introduced uh, Wilde to rough trade street boys. These were brought in by uh, Queensbury, and of course, the uh, uh, Wilde's lawyers dropped the case. Then Queensbury turned around and sued Wilde for sodomy, and he was convicted. And he was sentenced to Reading Jail for two years, hard labor, and of course, this ruined him. He had spent all his money, all of his, he'd asked for help from all of his fashionable friends. They couldn't remember his name. Mr. Who? <coughs> Oscar? Oh, I don't think I know anybody named Oscar. All abandoned him. His wife left him. Everything was gone. In prison, his health was ruined. His, his mentality and mind was shattered. He published, as he left prison after that, De Profundis, a tragedy. You should read it. Sort of an apologia. He exiled himself to Paris. He couldn't do anything in England anymore. He was sick. He was lonely. He called himself Sebastian Melmoth. He published his last work, his greatest, The Ballad of Reading Jail which was an expose of the horrors of imprisonment for anybody with, you know, sensibilities. And it had some effect on prison reform. A couple of years later, at the age of 46, in 1900, he died. 
Now, the point of bringing him in here is that when you say, oh, you're so Victorian, what you're saying is you're such an hypocrite. All of the fashionable people who lionized Wilde abandoned him when he became a slight embarrassment to them. So it's hypocrisy that we want to figure.